So there's been a lot of changes in the real estate investing market towards the end of 2022 and also going into 2023. One of those is the use of what's called a GP fund or general partner fund as an investment vehicle uh, that's being used uh, by certain real estate developers, sponsors. So I want to go over a little bit about uh, what a GP fund is, uh, just so you have a better understanding of how it's a little different than a traditional fund. So let me share my screen and we can go over it. All right, so normally when you're investing in real estate, you have options of things like, do I invest in what's called a syndication or a fund? So I'm just gonna kind of briefly go over the difference between them, what they are, why you'd use one or the other. Syndication is an investment in one project or one asset by pooling investor capital. It's usually led by what's called a sponsor, sometimes called a general partner or GP, who finds, sources the deal, manages the asset, helps raise the capital, closes on the property. Uh, the benefits are you know the specifics of what you're investing in. You will know that a syndication is for a very specific property. Let's say, for example, a 20-unit multifamily complex in a certain city. So you'll know all about the property being invested in. And there'll be a set return you're supposed to receive. Uh, what the, You'll know what the fees are, typically what their planned uh, payout timeline or hold period is for that one particular property. Funds are a little bit different. Uh, it's an investment in multiple properties that can be anywhere from two projects or properties to 10 or 20 or you know, a commercial REIT will invest in hundreds of different real estate properties. And they pool cash for investors and they diversify it across multiple assets. It's also led by a sponsor or general partner. It's very similar to syndication. The sponsor is the one who decides what investments to add, to, to purchase, to invest in. Typically, the, the investor or limited partner has no say in what assets are being purchased, uh, when they're being sold, any real control over it. They just put their money into this fund, and there's generally investment criteria of what the sponsor might be investing in, and that's about all the investor knows. The investor provides a commitment for future projects. So you might commit to putting in a million dollars and they'll call, do a capital call for 200,000 for the first project, 200,000 for the next and so on until you've gotten to your total committed capital of the million dollars. Now, a GP fund or general partner fund, which have, you know, essentially they're the same as a fund with a few minor changes. And they've become more popular over the last year, year and a half um, as sort of an alternative to a traditional real estate investment fund. And basically, you as an investor are going in, instead of as a limited partner, as just an investor, you're investing on the general partner side, because the general partner normally has what's called a co-invest, a GP co-invest, and they have to put in a certain amount of capital into the deal versus whether it's an institution or other investors putting in the rest of the capital. So they wanna know that the general partner has some skin in the game and that's the GP co-invest. So as an investor, you're helping them to provide that GP co-invest capital. And basically in some ways you're kind of a partner with the general partner on deals, although you're not really, you don't have any management or control. So you're not, technically a partner, but you're getting some of the benefits of investing on the general partner side. So it can be more attractive to investors. Um, also, some of the a lot of the GP funds are set up to where the investor that invests in a GP fund, and I'll show you how it kind of breaks down in a chart in a second, um, you get a percentage of what's called a promote. So carried interest or a promote is a general partner or sponsor gets, let's say 10 or 20% of a deal's profit as sort of their fee to put the deal together. That's called a promote. Um, and if you invest in a GP fund, you're getting essentially a percentage of that promote. So it helps increase your returns. Uh, at least that's on most, most deals will give you some kind of carry uh, or part of the carry. 
Now there are risks of partnering on with the GP because now you're no longer just an investor. You're helping invest in the general partner side. The GP might be going after and doing diligence on 20 deals and only five of them, you know, go through. So there are additional costs and a lot of GP funds are set up to where an investor in a GP fund takes the risk of what are considered pursuit costs. That's the cost that the general partner needs to put out to potentially develop some land initially, due diligence on different projects. Uh, there's a variety of different technically pursuit costs that the GP fund may pass on to its investors. Here is an org chart of sort of a sample GP fund, which is very similar to any other fund. You've got the property up here and there could be multiple properties. Let's say this is the first property. There could be a project specific special purpose entity and then possibly a holdings company. Now down here, sorry, you have the GP fund. The GP fund investors one over here, they are limited partners of the GP fund. So they invest directly into the general partner who then in turn invests usually around 10% general partner interest into each of their deals. Let's say these could this is project number one up here. They partner up usually with larger institutions, pension funds, uh, qualified institutional buyers that basically put in the other 90% of the deal and they partner up with them. So a GP fund investor is basically coming in at this other 10% over here and coming in on that side of the deal instead of over here, the typical LP side. Now, here's a sample of sort of what we've seen in the market of some typical types of GP funds. One is what I call a non-participating. This is where basically people are being given a PREF, a preferred return, 10 to 15%, usually on the higher side, guaranteed payout, secured against the sponsors promote. So it's a 10 to 15% PREF on the capital invested over the life of the investment, uh, which could be three, five, seven years, just really depends. Um, proceeds can be used to invest in deals, potentially fund pursuit costs. Uh, some of the terms of those funds are an offering period where they raise capital 12 months. The investment period is up to three years, up to three months. A lot of these are 506C, so they're advertised publicly on various uh, websites. There's usually, uh, usually you cannot withdraw. Sometimes there's a redemption after like a five-year period where you can get redeemed out of the fund. Otherwise, it's a closed end fund meaning you typically have to hold your money until the end of the fund once they've sold off all the assets. Uh, there can be different levels of fees, uh, asset management, property management, um, either charged at the fund level, project level, or both, it just depends. And also investors might have the right to invest separately, co-invest in the actual deals as well as an LP. The other type is more of what I call a participating investment structure. There may or may not be a PREF involved, uh, sometimes up to 8% is what I've seen, 0 to 8%. Uh, also for funding pursuit costs for development and direct investments. Now, the, the difference why I call it participating is they participate in profit. So they might get a PREF, either they do or they don't. Either way, they're also getting a participation in the profit side. And that could be anywhere between five and 10% of the GP promote. So let's say a GP gets a 20% carrier, 20% promote, 10% of that would go to the investors in the GP fund, plus any other LP returns from the invested capital at the project level that flow through. Um, I've seen even higher than that. so. Typically, it's a lower, like, we'll give you 5% of our promote or 10%. Uh, I have seen up to 50% of a promote uh, where the sponsor is really willing to, you know, give a large part of their, where they make their money and their promote to the investors. Just depends on what their 
intent is um, and how the returns stack up in that investment. Again, similar type of terms, uh, length of the investment period. Most of them are 506C uh, where they raise capital publicly. So some of the key issues uh, when it comes to general partner funds is a GP fund is diversified across, across multiple assets. So there is a reduced risk, but those GP funds that charge a pursuit cost, there is that pursuit cost risk because basically if the developer or the GP um, loses or spends a lot of money pursuing different projects that don't go through, the investor also takes on that risk. The GP funds, uh, part of the benefit for the general partner or sponsor is when they have that capital lined up, they can deploy it across a lot more projects a lot quicker. So if a GP has five projects in their pipeline and they partner up with certain institutions to go 90-10, that 10% may be their capital commitment that they have to come up with 10% on each deal, or it could be five or whatever the per percentage is. And that limits them in the number of deals they can do because they have to come up with their own capital to do that. Now, if they have a GP fund, they've got capital to deploy across 10, 20 projects potentially, instead of having used their own capital. So it's less risky also for the general partner. In terms of control, um, investors have little control over what investments there are. Just because it's called a GP fund doesn't mean you're a general partner, doesn't mean you have any say in what assets they pursue or how they manage the business. You're just like an LP in a syndication. You have no control over it. Uh, so also, as I mentioned, the pursuit costs sometimes could be pushed into a GP fund which could affect your returns. But generally what I've seen is the projections on a lot of the GP funds, even with a small percentage of the promote going to the investors, is they end up getting way higher IRR, internal rate of return, than a traditional uh, investment on the LP side. So there can be higher upside in a general partner fund. So there's a lot of factors to consider and you can always contact us to discuss it with you further. All right, thank you.